In this video, we're going to look at pie charts and interpreting them. Um, it's very important to be able to interpret a pie chart because they're quite often used in reports and newspapers and that sort of thing, uh, news broadcasts. And it's important to be able to look at a pie chart and be able to deduce information from it. So here we've got a pie chart and it says, Harry asks each student in his class how they travelled to school that day. He uses the results of a pie chart. So here we've got the pie chart. You can clearly see that walk is the most popular method that is... Um, by a popular method of transport uh, for going to school and you have got um, well you've got car and by bus being the two smallest ones you'd actually probably have to measure them I'm thinking car looks like it's actually the smallest one okay let's have a look at a typical question or two typical questions so part one how did most of the students travel to school because walk has got the biggest section you can see that that's the modal method of transport the modal most common so that means that walking or by, or how do the most common students travel to school walking or by foot okay and um, perhaps write a sentence on um, just one thing to point out this pie chart it says he asks each student in his class how they travel to school one thing, important thing to point out is this shows you how uh, what fraction of the class or what proportion of the class went by each method. It doesn't actually tell you how many walked, how many went by car, how many cycled and how many went by bus. You need some extra information to work that out. Okay, here we go. Harry asks a total of 24 students. Work out the number of students who cycled the school. So, if you look at the cycle section, the cycle section, you've got a quarter of a circle. Okay, it's a quarter of the pie chart. That means a quarter of the student cycled. So we need to work out a quarter of 24. So to get a quarter of 24, we just do 24 divided by 4. And 24 divided by 4 is 6. So that means that, that, means that 6 of the students cycled the school. Okay, this time we've got another pie chart, and it uh, says the pie chart gives information on um, about the votes received by three students in an election. So we've got Amy, we've got Paul, and we've got Sidra, and it says the students received a total of 84 votes. So this pie chart represents 84 votes in total. It says how many votes did Amy receive? Well, as you can see, Amy is half of the pie chart. Her section or her sector is 180 degrees. That means that she gets half of the votes, so we need to do a half of 84. So we're going to do 84 divided by 2 and whenever we half 84 you'd get 42. Now the next part of the question says in the pie chart the angle for Paul is 60 degrees. It says what fraction of the votes did Paul receive? So the Paul pie chart has 360 degrees in total so that means that the fraction will be out of 360 degrees. And Paul got 60 degrees, so 60 de uh, his uh, sector is 60 degrees. That means that it's 60 degrees out of 360. So if we simplify this fraction down, we'll find out what fraction of the votes Paul received. So let's divide both of them by 10. So we take off 0, so we get 6 over 36. Half both of them, you're going to get uh, 3 over 18. And they're both in the 3 times table, so divide both of those by 3, and you get 1 over 6. So that means that Paul received a sixth of the votes. Now this is actually really useful because sometimes the question that we had for Amy was quite nice where we had the, knew there was 84 people or 84 votes all together and asked us how many Amy had. So it was really easy because it was half of the pie chart so we could just half the, the, um, the number of votes in total. However, if it was Paul, what we needed to do is because it was 84 all together and he gets a sixth, you need to do 84 divided by six to work out how many votes Paul got. So it's really useful to be able to work out what fraction each person gets. So what we're going to do now is we're going to have a look at the angles and what fraction they represent. And if we know those, then it can be really easy to do the or make it really easy to do these questions. Okay, so uh, here I've put written down uh, here I've written down the size of the angles, and we're going to work out the fractions they represent. Now 180, we know that first of all straight away 180 is half of a pie chart. Okay. That's because if you wrote 180 over 360 and you simplify that down, you would get one half. Okay, 120 degrees. Well, 120 degrees out of the 360, well, if you divide both by 10, you would get 12 over 36. And if you divide both of those by 12, 12 goes into 12 once, and 12 goes into 36 three times. So if you ever see a 120 degree angle, then that would be a third of the pie chart.
A 90 degree angle, well, we've seen that before, if you had a circle or a pie chart and you have a 90 degree angle like so, you know that's going to be a quarter. 72 degrees. Well, 72 degrees out of the 360. If you divide both of these by 2, you would get 36 over 180. They're both in the 6 times tables. Divide both of those by 6 and you're going to get 6 over 30. And both of those again are in the 6 times tables. So divide both of those by 6 and you're going to get 1 fifth. So if you had 5 72 degree angles, they would make the whole pie chart of 360 degrees. So a 72 degree angle would represent a fifth of a pie chart. 60 degrees, we've just looked at that one. 60 degrees is a sixth of a pie chart. And another way to think about this is two 120 degree angles will make up a whole pie chart. Three 120 degrees angles will make up a full circle. Four 90 degree angles will make a full turn. Five 72 degree angles will make a full circle. And likewise, six 60 degree angles will make a full angle. So that way you can sort of quickly see that, you know, 180 degrees is a half. 120 degrees is a third, 90 degrees is a quarter, 72 degrees is a fifth, and 60 degrees is a sixth. Let's look at some more popular angles that you would be useful to know. 36 degrees, well if you do use a similar method, that would be a tenth. 30, uh, 30 degrees, well 30 degrees goes into 360 12 times, so that would be a twelfth, or if you can cancel it down. Uh, 24 degrees, well if you use 20, uh, 15, 24 degrees, that's a 15th, you'd have 360 degrees. And 18 degrees is a 20th. Okay. Likewise, if you were to cancel down that fraction, you'd get a 20th. So if you ever see any of those angles, then they're the fractions that they represent. So it would make it much easier to do those questions. Let's have a look at a typical question then. So, here we've got a pie chart, and it says the club... I don't know which club, but the club asks 400 supporters to choose their favourite mascot or choose a mascot. The pie chart shows their choices. So we've got one, two, three, four sectors representing fox, eagle, lion and bear. And as you can see, lion is the most popular one. And the question says, sorry, the question says, how many of the 400 supporters choose fox? Now, as we've seen earlier, 72 degrees, well, 72 degrees is a fifth. So that means that a fifth of the supporters, a fifth of them, uh, choose Fox. So that means we want a fifth of 400 supporters. So we're going to do 400 divided by 5. And if you can't remember how to do that, use short division. So 400 divided by 5. So 5 into 4 doesn't go, remainder 4. 5 into 40 goes 8 times, and 5 into uh, 0 goes 0. So the answer would be 80 supporters. So 80 supporters choose Fox. And not all the fractions will be a fifth or a third or a quarter and so on. You may get an angle such as 240 degrees. Uh, one way to consider that is, well, if 120 degrees is one third, then 240 degrees would be two thirds. But again, if you don't know what fraction it is, you can just write it over 360 degrees. And then just cancel it down. So just cancel it down like so. They were both in the 12 times tables. 12 goes into that twice. And 12 goes into that three times. So if you ever had a 240 degree angle in a pie chart, it would be two thirds.